Hello dear students how are you all I hope that you all are in the best of your health and enthusiastic towards your studies Students today we are going to study chapter number 13 of class 7th science that is motion and time First of all let us see what we already know about this topic what is rectilinear motion think two examples of circular motion what do you understand by periodic motion do all objects possess similar motion we all know something about these topics now let us see what we are going to study in this chapter slow or fast motion speed measurement of time and distance time graph let us start with slow and fast motion we know that some vehicles move faster than others even the same vehicle may move faster or slower at different times distance traveled by one object moving along a straight path in a specific time can easily tell us whether the object is moving fast or slow now let us discuss speed today we will learn about speed and its measurement techniques as you all know that if an object change its position in comparison to the objects present near to it the object is said to be in motion and if the position of an object remains same it considered to be stationary so dear students some objects moves faster than others but how can we measure it let us understand this we can find out which of the two or more objects moving faster by comparing the distances moved by them in unit time for example you can see in this picture that in a specific time an adult person covers the distance from point a to point c whereas a small boy covers the distance from point a to point b in that similar time it means that the boy moves slower than the adult person here in this example we have taken specific time but we can measure or we can take another ways to measure the speed in which we will take a specific distance for example when there is a race competition in our school there is one starting point and one end point means we fix the distance like 100 meter race or 200 meter race all students start race at specific time but the student who reaches first at end point wins it means speed of that student is more than others so dear students 
to measure speed we need to study time and distance both to measure speed the formula is speed is equals to total distance covered by total time taken it means we can determine the speed of a given object when we measure the time taken by it to cover a certain distance as you all know in science when we measure different quantities we need a unit so let's learn about the unit of speed as we studied that distance covered can be measured in meters or kilometers short distances can be measured in meters whereas long distances can be measured in kilometers we can measure time in seconds or in hours so for unit of speed we will put units of distance and time in formula speed is equals to distance over time if we take distance in meter and time in seconds then the unit of speed will be meter per second for long distances we can measure speed in kilometers per hour you mo- all might have seen a meter fitted on top of the scooter or a motorcycle or on the dashboards of car and buses this is called a speedometer it records speed directly in kilometer per hour if we know the speed and time taken by the object to cover specific distance we can also measure distance traveled by the object so formula for distance covered is distance traveled is equals to speed into time taken and if we know the distance and speed we can also calculate time so formula for time is time taken is equals to distance traveled by speed so dear students with the help of these formulas we can calculate speed distance traveled and time taken by an object to cover specific distances now let us discuss measurement of time dear students as we measure distance in kilometers meters centimeters and millimeters similarly we can measure time in years months days hours minutes and seconds bigger units for expressing very long time intervals are decade that is equal to 10 years century which is equal to 100 years and millennium which is equal to 1000 years students have you ever thought how time was measured in olden days where clocks and watches are not present in ancient times people used some natural events which repeated regularly after fixed time intervals to measure time for example the time between one sunrise to the next 
was called a day similarly a month was measured from one new moon to the next a year was fixed as the time taken by the earth to complete one revolution of the sun but dear students often we need to measure time intervals which are much shorter than a day clocks or watches are perhaps the most common time measuring devices in order to measure time intervals shorter than one day a number of time measuring devices were invented in ancient times like water clock sand clock candle clock or sundial we can measure seconds easily in our presently available watches it was discovered by a famous scientist galileo galilei for this he used a simple pendulum he found that a pendulum of a given length takes always same time to complete one oscillation this observation led to the development of pendulum clocks the pendulum clock used for measuring time is thus based on the periodic motion of a pendulum time period of a pendulum first of all let us see what is a pendulum a simple pendulum consists of a small metallic ball or a piece of stone suspended from a rigid stand by a thread the metallic ball is called the bob of the pendulum when the bob of the pendulum is released after taking it slightly to one side it begins to move to and fro the to and fro motion of a simple pendulum is an example of periodic or an oscillatory motion The pendulum is said to have completed one oscillation when its bob moves from one extreme position to the other extreme position and comes back to the first point. So the time taken by the pendulum to complete one oscillation is called its time period dear students now let us discuss distance time graph before studying about distance time graph first of all let us understand what graph means a diagram showing the relationship between variable quantities by a number of distinctive dots lines bars etc is called a graph graphs are present in different forms such as bar graph line graph and pie chart all three types of graphs are very different from each other as you can see here bar graph is a diagram which shows informations as bars of different heights which represent the values of the variable quantity 
a pie chart is a kind of graph or a diagram which shows the percentage composition of something in the form of slices of a circle line graph is a representation of any physical quantity in the form of a line so let us discuss a line graph for distance and time for this we need two physical quantities let us make a table which shows different distances covered by a car in different time imagine that a car covers 2 km distance in first 5 minutes in next 5 minutes means total in 10 minutes it covers 4 km distance similarly in next 15 and 20 minutes it covers 6 and 8 km distance these values are showing that the car is moving now let us make a line graph for distance and time with these values first of all draw two perpendicular lines to represent two axes the horizontal line here is called x axis and the vertical line is called y axis the point of intersection of x axis and y axis is known as the origin o both the quantities possess zero value at origin o we will start our measurement from origin we will take distance on y axis and time on x axis now choose a scale to represent the distance and time on the graph for motion of car scales could be for time 1 minute is equals to 1 cm and for distance 1 km is equals to 1 cm now to mark the set of values draw a line parallel to y axis from my 5 minutes and draw a line parallel to x axis starts from 2 km mark a point where these two lines intersect similarly from 10 second draw a line upwards in front of y axis up to 4 km and make a point then take third and fourth set of values of time and distance and mark all the points on the graph with a pencil line to obtain required distance time graph now as you are looking here we have a straight line graph because here the car travels equal distance in equal interval of time the slope of a distance time graph indicates the speed of car now dear students let us revise the main points discussed in this chapter the distance moved by an object in a unit time is called its speed unit of speed is meter per second some of the important time measuring devices used in ancient times were water clock sand clock candle clock and sundial 
periodic events are used for the measurement of time periodic motion of a pendulum has been used to make clocks and watches the distance time graph for the motion of an object moving with a constant speed is a straight line dear students now let us match these events with the type of motion first motion of a needle of a sewing machine motion of the earth around sun motion of a train along a straight bridge types of motion are rectilinear motion periodic motion and circular motion motion of a needle of a sewing machine shows periodic motion motion of the earth around the sun is circular motion and motion of a train along a straight path is a rectilinear motion now let us discuss some questions and i hope you all know the answers well question number 1 give the units of distance time and speed yes you got it right distance can be measured in centimeters meters and kilometers time can be measured in seconds and hours and minutes too speed can be measured in meter per second and kilometer per hour question number 2 is the distance traveled by a car at a various times is shown here in this table here we take time in hours and distance in kilometers if car starts its journey at 8 am at 8:30 it covers 20 kilometers at 9 am it covers 40 kilometers at 9:30 am it covers 60 kilometers and at 10 am it covers 80 kilometer distance so dear students please try to draw a graph of distance and time here we are showing you the answer how the graph will be you all have to draw it on your own in your notebooks so here we came to an end of the chapter i hope you all have understood it well you all stay safe and healthy and keep studying and keep smiling we will soon meet with one another chapter good day thank you